Hi guys and welcome to my channel. In this video I'm going to show you how I painted the swan using watercolor pouring technique which is probably one of the most fun things you can do using watercolor pigments and I will give you my top five tips on how to use this technique in order to come up with a nice background just like I did in this painting. If you're new to the channel, hi my name is Anna, I'm a Canadian money designer and I love sharing my watercolor tips and techniques here on YouTube. My commercial projects are mostly on the decorative side in terms of style but it's so much fun every once in a while to take full advantage of the ability of watercolor pigments to kind of flow and spread with lots of water so this is what you will see me do in this painting using lots of uh, spraying and pouring ton of fun now a couple of things to keep in mind uh, key things to remember when you're using watercolor pouring technique and this is by no means an exhaustive list there are lots of things that uh, you will learn as you practice this more and more but these are the five top things that I always remember when I'm using pouring technique and I think you will find them quite helpful. So from my experience, number one, it's always good to mask the light areas before you start your pouring. You will see in this particular painting, I use masking fluid to mask this one and also some of the reflections and highlights on the water. The second thing I wanted to mention is these tools that will be very, very useful as you're practicing watercolor pouring. So number one is a spray bottle and you can get it in your local art store or a dollar store and you simply load it up with clear water and it helps you move the pigment around as you spray it. The second thing is uh, a syringe and uh, this is actually quite neat. I've seen people just pour watercolor pigment on, but it's really helpful to use a syringe because it's got a, a very precise point so you can direct your colors where you want them to go. The third thing I wanted to mention is what you will find as you're using the pouring technique is that every layer looks a lot lighter as it dries out. So don't be afraid when you see kind of the dark areas they will dry and they will look a lot lighter uh, when they're completely dry and the water evaporates. So in a sense, you can expect every layer to be a lot lighter and we will actually use several layers to achieve uh, quite a dark look before I erase the masking fluid, but it's not going to be as dark as it is when you just pour it because water makes it look a lot darker and a lot more saturated before it evaporates. Number four, try to limit your palette when you do pouring so um, in other words try to pick a few colors that you're very comfortable with and you know the way they behave in this particular case i used two of my favorite oranges but overall my palette is quite limited because the water will make the pigments mix directly on paper and you want to kind of keep your palette quite limited in terms of uh, the blends that you can come up with. Finally, after everything is dry and you removed your masking fluid and filled out those white areas, it's uh, really helpful to add one or two more layers, wet on dry, with much more saturated pigment, just to add a few details and a few areas of interest. So in the case of this one, I used my dagger brush from Escoda and I painted a few um, grass leaves and sort of like a bush on the right bottom side. This is actually one of my favorite uh, decorative brushes to use because it allows me to come up with very beautiful organic shapes. If you want to see a full review of this brush, you can uh, click on the link in the video description below and I will also leave uh, a link on top of the video as well. So now let's take it to the table and I will show you step by step how I built this painting from applying masking fluid on the light areas to using several layers one after another uh, pouring my colors directly on paper and watching them spread. You'll see me sort of tilt the page to direct the pigment and you'll see me use a lot of uh, spraying with clear water to sort of again direct the pigment where I want it to go. 
After every layer, I dry the paper and it's at least two hours, sometimes half a day. And the reason for that is you don't want to disturb the underlying layers. You want to sort of start fresh every time and make sure that water is completely evaporated from your paper. Then you will see me erase the masking fluid and actually paint the details on the swan. You'll see me use wet on dry technique, meaning I'm using wet paint on dry paper and I'm going to paint some details on the water and I'm going to finish off with my dagger brush creating some grass details on the front of the painting. Enjoy! If you like the video, don't forget to subscribe. If you have any questions, you can type them in the comments below and I will make sure to answer them either during the week or address them directly in one of my upcoming videos.
Thanks guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions about pouring technique or watercolors in general, don't hesitate to ask me down below and I'll see you guys next week. Take care.